In my previous video, I finalized the fore and aft location of my engine on the 39 Hudson big boy build. But now it's time to decide on an engine angle and then I can finally build engine mounting brackets and also a bracket in the rear for the transmission. Coming up! Hey, how's it jokes and welcome back to the shop. If you don't know me, my name is Duff and I'm busy with this 1939 Hudson Terraplane big boy pickup build. Um, I would really like to thank everybody for their positive comments um, and all the information that you passed along. If there's one thing I really enjoy about this whole YouTube business is that it's what you can learn from comments and the input of you guys. So thanks very much. Um, I also did a little bit of research and I'd like to share with you some random facts that I just wrote down on a piece of paper. For instance, did you know that Huston, Hudson was the first ever car company to come up with a balanced crankshaft. They were also the first guys to do a dashboard oil pressure and generator warning light. And another interesting fact, between 1951 and 1954 Hudson actually dominated the NASCAR scene. Can you believe it? Um, what I also learned, because I was wondering about this truck right hand drive in South Africa, but apparently in the 1920s already, they were being assembled in South Africa from knockdown kits that were imported from Canada. So uh, that uh, tells me that this prop truck was most probably built right here in South Africa a long time ago. <laughs> so while I was sniffing around on the internet, I also learned another very interesting thing. In 1939, according to one source, only 640 commercial vehicles were built by Hudson and that included the half-ton pickups, the three-quarter ton pickups, woody wagons, sedan deliveries. So the number of big boys that were built in 1939 is unknown but um, it's becoming quite apparent <laughs> that this is actually a very rare truck. The more I learn about it, the more I realize it. So I think I'm going to start by making the bracket for the back end of the transmission and then once I've got that located I can play with the angle of the engine and once I'm happy with that I can build the brackets up front here for the engine mountings. So I'm busy making up a bracket for the uh, gearbox mount or the transmission mount. I think uh, my friends in the States like to use that term. So this will now actually fit like that. And then obviously the gearbox or transmission sits right there. Um, I'm using two pieces of flat bar here. This is uh, 50 by, what is this, six, 50 by 6 millimeters or 2 by quarter inch. I'm busy welding that together. It needs a bit of a kick here. So I can get the height of my transmission output shaft to sit in the correct spot. You'll see later on when um, I show you inside the truck. So I'm just busy welding up this. Well, I suppose there was no need to grind this weld. But this way it just looks faster, man. <laughs> hey, look here. This mounting is made in India. That's quite a change from the typical made in China. <laughs> so the back end of my gearbox is currently resting on these wooden blocks. And the plan now is to get my new fan angled bracket in here. Clamp it in place. I'll centralize it between the frames. And then I can tack it in place. And then we can take it from there. So I've got a center line here on my bracket that you can't really see. But I've measured to make sure that it is center within the frame. So I've measured this way. And I've measured the other way as well. So that looks good. I've also measured to make sure that this 
bracket is parallel to or square to the size of the frame if you know what I mean. I've checked it out here with the spirit level. It's nice and level. I did level the frame or the chassis as well. So I think it's looking good enough. I think I'm going to tack it in place now. So I've still got to weld up this bracket fully, but I'm going to worry about that later. It's good enough for now. So I want to get this uh, mounting in there, and I just need to jack up the back of the transmission a little bit to do that. Is that enough? I <laughs> know it needs to go up quite a bit. Here we go. Come on. Right. You can drop it down. There we go. Fantastic. We are roughly in place. Stick some bolts in here. Here we go. Right, so the back end of my transmission is now located by this bracket I built. Um, I've checked and measured through like this between the two frames. You see that this is in the center. So that's good. The next thing I need to think about is the angle of this output shaft. So if I stick that angle finer on here, I'm talking about that angle. So uh, once I've decided what this angle should be, I can bolt the forward engine mounting brackets. So it just makes sense to me that in order to know your real engine angle, the car would need to be sitting on its wheels, fully loaded, at right height, and then only will you be able to get a true engine angle. Of course, in my case, that's not possible. <laughs> but because I'm going to have air suspension, I can actually adjust my ride height. So it doesn't really matter. The one thing I do need to think about, I think, is, shall we call it, the rake of the frame, or the angle of the frame, um, which again, with air suspension, I've got the luxury of changing that. So in order to uh, create some kind of a departure point for myself, I've decided to set the chassis up with a bit of a forward rake so it's not horizontal or level to the ground. You can also see it here on the back end of the cab which is definitely not vertical but I'm doing that on purpose <laughs> because I've kind of liked the idea of this whole truck with a forward slant. Think Ratfink if you remember that. So yes, um, it's all theoretical, with the air, obviously it will depend and you might sit at different angles when you're driving. It's not that critical, the engine angle in relation to the horizon, but I need to have some kind of a departure point, so this is my theoretical, let's call it frame rake, slant it a little forward, and then also theoretically I could maintain that rake and adjust the ride height with the air, in theory. <laughs> I've got my angle finder onto the bottom of the frame here in a straight section and I'm measuring 3 degrees. So I don't know if this is an accepted or real term, <laughs> but I now have a frame rake of 3 degrees. So I'm sure many of you guys must have noticed that your carburetor 
if I stick this ruler across here, you can see it better. That this line is not parallel to the engine, or to be more specific, the crankshaft center line. You can see a difference here. If you compare it to the tappet cover here, well, that's what we call them. I think in other parts of the world, you like to call it a rocker arm cover. I've heard quite a few different terms, but yeah, quite no noticeable. You can see there's a difference there. So at least theoretically then, first price would be that your carburetor is horizontal with your car sitting at right height. So I've assumed the right height frame rake. <laughs> so I'm going to actually now lift the engine up with a train hoist until I see the bubble to show that uh, we are horizontal. Remember the back end of my transmission is already in place, so I can only lift up the front now. There we go. Now, my carburetor is level with the horizon, if nothing else. <laughs> so of course this uh, level carburetor business can't be critical, um, otherwise you'd never be able to drive up a hill or down a hill. <laughs> but uh, I'm just chasing theoretical departure points so that I've got some kind of a reference for carrying on with what I want to do. <laughs> so with the carburetor level with the horizon, let's measure the angle of the output shaft here on the transmission and see what we get. We see 3 degrees. It's the same as the frame rack, can you believe it? However, this angle is relative to the horizon because this, this thing works on gravity it's not relative to the frame, but we've got an engine angle here of 3 degrees relative to horizon. <laughs> so I made a quick drawing here just to make sure that I'm not talking nonsense. <laughs> so we measured the frame rake at 3 degrees relative to horizon. I measured the engine angle or that output shaft angle also at 3 degrees relative to horizon, but engine angle relative to frame would then be 3 plus 3 is 6 degrees. <laughs> I don't actually know why I made that drawing. Um, I just I guess I just wanted to understand it better. What I do know though is that down the line when I start playing with the four link I would want the pinion angle on my differential, this angle here, well, actually, that angle must be the same as the output shaft angle on the transmission. So this is going to be have to be 3 degrees as well, given that the frame sits exactly as it does now. But we'll get into that much later and we'll explore and understand the reasons for why I'm saying that. By the way, I did check my frame across like this as well. To make sure that we are sitting level at the moment. Okay, so the back end of the transmission is now resting on my bracket. And I've got the engine angle where I want. But I'm still hanging off of the chain hoist here. So it can move sideways still. And it can even wobble a little bit like this. <laughs> Look at that. So I now need to make sure that it's central. And I need to make sure that it's kind of level. If you look at it from the front. So I quickly made up this contraption from some spare scrap bits of steel I had here. So shall we call it a cradle? The plan is that this will be resting on the ground, on the concrete. I've welded in these two nuts here with bolts. So when I tighten the bolts, I can push the engine up and even level it. These two points are going to be, the sump is sitting in here, right? So these two points is resting against the bottom end of the block where the sun bolts on. So the engine will be sitting, resting right there. I'm going to try and take a shot so you can see what I mean. So let's uh, see if this is going to work. <laughs> so I got the cradle here in under the engine. And you can see now the engine is resting right there. So by adjusting this bolt, if I tighten it, I'm going to raise the engine a little bit so I can finally set my engine angle 
and I can also level it by playing with the two different bolts, one on each side. It's actually working very well. So that's what, it's, that's what it looks like uh, when I crawl in here under the truck. My engine is now actually resting on this cradle and I've been adjusting my two bolts to level it out. So I'm looking backwards and I've got the spirit level sitting on top of my carburetor. And you can see that the bubble is nicely in the middle there. I've also checked that my frame is level. So now, as far as I'm concerned, my engine is sitting nicely parallel and level towards or in, in relation to the frame when I'm looking in a fore and aft direction, if that makes any sense. <laughs> So I'm looking at it from the side now, got my little spillet level in place again on the carburetor here. If you look carefully, um, I'm actually a little bit high on the front side of the engine, um, but uh, I've done that on purpose. <laughs> That's my thumb suck attempt at allowing a little bit for the compression of the engine and rubbers. I guess you can say I'm splitting ball airs, <laughs> but why not? So I think we're cool here. So the last thing I checked was to make sure that my engine is nicely centered in between the two frames. So I clamped on this bar here. I measured them carefully and established the center line indicated by this piece of tape, that edge of it. And then I used my rusty but trusty old square. And if I project that line upwards, you can see I'm falling on the center of this shaft of the pulley here on the water pump. So I had to push the engine around a little bit to get it finally in place. But I think we're there now. You'll be good to go. So I got some fresh new engine mounts. It came to me all the way from India. <laughs> so we'll see how long they last. And now I can just get them in place and then I can start thinking about building the brackets to hold this blue beast where it needs to be. <laughs> it's time for some CAD work. So I'm just busy making up a cardboard template here. I've just temporarily bolted it onto the engine mounting there so I've got a reference hole here I've made a few marks so I can now take it out and then cut it according to my marks and then we can come and try it again something like this um, the easy or the beautiful thing <laughs> about working with cardboard is um, it doesn't look right the first time it's easy to make another one so I'm just gonna give it a few basic cuts here and we can go and try it and if it doesn't look right we'll just make another one looks like a kind of a strange bracket to me at the moment but let's go try it okay let's see uh, I'm gonna have to cut this thing off that was the pivot point for the original Isuzu's handbrake. I'm not going to need that anymore. But let's see, this is going to go in like that. Something to that effect. Yeah, I think that's going to work well. Just need to make another one for you. I can even put a gusset across the top and the bottom if I want to. Um, I think quarter inch plate. 6 mm will be more than adequate.
So I cancelled the shape a little bit. That overhang I had, or overlap, decided it's not required. I think this will be cleaner and it's going to be way more than strong enough. Especially when I put this in like that. I mean, that's really going to make it super strong. So I think I'm just going to cut the pieces and prep the pieces for the other side as well and then we can tack them together in one go. So I've got the pieces cut for this one on the other side as well. This one piece is going to go in like that. Um, I've double checked all my dimensions, my angles, and that my engine is in the center. So I think I can start to weld these things together. Okay, so I've got my brackets welded in on both sides. Um, I've still got to do these vertical welds up here and back there. But um, yeah, axis is a bit tricky now and why should I struggle? <laughs> so I'll do those once the engine's out again. It'll be just so much easier. I do have enough though to keep everything in place so I'm not worried about it. So I think next for me is to remove my temporary cradle down there. Okay, so when I take out this contraption of mine, the engine will drop down on the mounts. Let's see how it goes. I mean, as the, those rubbers will obviously compress a little bit as it takes up the weight of the engine. So I am expecting that. It's a little bit of a drop. Feels like this bolt is loose now, a little bit more. You just got to do the one on the other side. There we go. The engine is now resting on the mounts. Voila! <laughs> so let's see what we get here with the level on the carburetor. Um, how about that, eh? It's within the lines. It's a little bit down on the back side. You might remember I actually overcompensated by lifting the front end a little bit to sort of give a thumbs up allowance for the compression of the rubbers and everything else. So it's dropped to that position. But that's good enough for me, man. I'm more than happy. Okay, lucky man. This engine is now solidly mounted. It's not going to go anywhere. I'll call that another small milestone achieved. My engine and gearbox or transmission is now aligned and fastened in place. Thanks for hanging out with me. I appreciate it. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, have a lucky one.